Hey there, Erica Swarthy Daisy here. Quick video on how to use Poll Everywhere. That's polleverywhere.com to make a quick trivia game that you can play on Zoom. Depending on how you log in with your credentials, that's your email address and password, I am just showing you from the home page how to get into your settings. So I just went to polleverywhere.com and I hit get started. Now you'll see the editing space and here is where you'll find all of the controls for creating new trivia games. So on the top left, you'll see a create button. You'll tap on that or you'll click on that. Next, you will be given several options for creating different polls. So all the way to the far right, you will see an option for competitions. So click on competitions. Once you click on competitions, it'll open up a template for the competition questions and answers. So under there, you'll see create a series of questions, then let participants compete to answer fastest. Under there, you'll see the competition title. So this is where you're going to write the title of the competition. So you can name it whatever, maybe 80s quiz or um, whatever you want to call it, easy quiz for the sake of this video. And once you do that, then you're going to move on to the next step. After giving your competition a title or your quiz or trivia game a title, then you're going to move on to the next step, which is where you see a number one and then multiple choice. So this is the multiple choice option for the trivia, which is highly recommended, of course. And I think that's the default uh, option anyways. But from there, you're going to click the title. So the title is just the title of the question for number one. So there is where you're going to put in the first question. And the, for the sake of this video, I'm asking, what is a brontosaurus? And as I'm typing, you notice that there are little sentences popping up as suggestions and that's just because I've used these questions before so if you're typing things over and over and over the system of course is going to remember some of those questions so you don't have to do as much work but um, that's why it's showing up like that but I could either click on it or I can type a fresh sentence now here I'm going to enter the second third and fourth answer choices So now I'm going to mark the correct answer for number one. And as you see to the left of the answer, what is a brontosaurus? It is a dinosaur. I'm going to check the box and it turns green. So it's first faded out. When you click on it, it'll turn green, indicating that that is the correct answer for the question for number one. The left of the check boxes, you'll see six dots just in a slim little panel that you can click and drag around so up and down to change the order of the actual answers there's also an option for adding additional questions so i did that in the earlier part of this video as i was adding questions for number one but all you have to do is click add option and it will give you a fifth option sixth option etc on the bottom right, you'll see a small blue button that says create. We're going to click on create and here is going to take us to another screen, which is also an editing template. So once we click on that, you'll see all of the additional options that we'll have for finalizing parts of our game. Now that you're in the new editing panel here, you will see at the top left an edit button. Then you'll see add question. Then you'll see a play button after that. And then on your left, you'll see some squares. So it's similar to PowerPoint. So if you guys are used to editing in PowerPoint, it has that same look template wise. And this is where you're going to see a preview of the actual questions and answers. And then if you move over to the right side, you'll see that you have the option at the very top to clear all responses, to delete 
and it's not here yet because we haven't inserted any answers but when we do that won't be gray anymore after that you'll see competition settings so you can restrict participants you can allow changing answers enable a timer and then give it an amount of time for them to answer so you can choose 10 seconds 15 20 up to 30. Now that we've adjusted the various settings for our quiz or our trivia game, we're going to go ahead and test it out and see what it looks like. So we're going to go back to the top part of the screen. Just slightly to the left, you'll see that play button again. That's what we're going to click to activate the actual quiz so it'll fill up the whole screen on our laptops or our devices. And this is what your audience is going to see once you activate the quiz by hitting the play button and then to activate the first question you're going to hit the space bar and it'll present the first question here what is a brontosaurus once you hit the space bar again that's when the timer starts and that's when all of the people in your audience are going to start playing the game so it's already going to be active they'll see the first question space bar again to start the timer and they can make their choices from there Pardon my editing, but on the bottom left of your screen as the moderator, you will see a timer counting down. So say we gave this 30 seconds, you'll see a countdown from 30 seconds, but the audience will not see that. So you can, of course, give them an indication of when they're down to 10 and five seconds, things like that. That's just kind of thing that I do for my audience. And because no one is actively playing it on the outside of this game, I'm just showing you what it looks like after all of the players have inserted their choices and you'll see a checkbox and typically it'll be a bar going across showing which answers and how much uh, of the audience got it right versus got it wrong so it'll show percentages and also to note to the bottom right of the screen you won't see it here but in the previous uh, shot here it has a small results uh, text on there and that at the end of it it'll show you like a number so if you have 10 people playing it'll eventually just show you how many people have inserted their answers on their side as players and just to go back to our previous panel I wanted to note that at the top you'll see when poll is active respond at pollev.com slash whatever so here this just generated a general uh, link and name of the link based on my email that i used but if you purchase the premium you can always change that to whatever you want it to be but for the sake of what i'm using it for which is just fun games and things like that on zoom i just let it default to whatever um name they wanted to give me so it's very very random but yes you have to at some point take that web link that they produce for you so pollev.com slash forward slash blah 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 whatever they're going to call yours and that's what you're going to share with the audience so they can play live so here is the key you as the moderator have to have this panel open hit play and hit the space bar to make the questions present themselves live so they can't go on it in advance they can't go on it afterward you have to be in front of your device activating the questions for it to be a live interactive game. So that's it, you guys. I hope this was helpful and I hope this will get you on the road to creating a quick game quiz trivia that you can use on Zoom. And another point that I want to highlight, I kind of forgot this, but if you're going to play it on Zoom, everyone needs to have uh, access to two devices if they're going to use one, when they close out Zoom or go to their home screen to go to the web browser to play this game, you will not see their faces or they won't see your face. So that's just one thing to note. Nothing to worry about. They can still actively play and the game will resume. But if they're going to use two, you'll, for example, use your laptop to Zoom and then they'll have their smart device to answer to enter the uh, answers for the trivia. So that's just something else to note. And you as the moderator of the game, if you want to share your screen on Zoom, there's also again another video that shows you how to do that. I'll link it below as well as in the cards. 
But if you as the moderator want to share your screen with players, you can do that. And for the most part, they're just going to see what you're playing. So the active um, game that's open. So they'll just only see the cards. They'll see the questions and they'll see who got what right. And then they'll see the overall winners. Okay. So that's just another thing I forgot to mention earlier, but it's going to be fun. If you all have any additional questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you guys have any additional tips for other viewers, please do that as well, as well as myself, because I'm always learning. Once again, this is Erica Swarthy Days. I tried to make this quick, but after I got going, it was a little longer. But I wanted to make sure you guys had a good grasp on how to create a trivia game that you can use on Zoom. Share it, like it, please subscribe. Thank you so much and have fun. Bye.